So here we are in one of our main showroom facilities. And uh, in here, it's typical of the variety that we have. Is this the car you're going to be racing this weekend? This is the Tajero Jaguar. Mm -hmm. Ex-Securi cost 1959 Le Mans entry, Goodwood TT in 59 as well. These proper manufacturers, when they build cars like this, the finish and the detail is still to show quality. You know, if you look at this, we've not changed anything. This is how it would have been when it was new. This is our storage facility. Uh, grown over the last 15 years, if you like, we have in total in our care now, close to 500 cars. No kidding. If someone asked me what's the most significant Ferrari in existence, I think this is it. Hi, I'm Kirby Allison, and for years now, I've been exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. This journey has taken me from some of the world's most highly regarded bespoke tailoring houses, all the way to a proper shooting estate in Scotland. I've come to believe that nobody does tradition better than the British, from dressing in the proper attire for a given occasion through the liturgy of the ceremonial. There is always an etiquette at its core. The traditions of dressing properly, the traditions of the country pursuits, the traditions of British ceremony. But in today's video, we explore what could be one of the most exciting of the British traditions, racing. I've been invited by my good friend James to join him as he prepares to race his 1959 Tajero in the Goodwood Revival, arguably the world's most renowned vintage racing event. So strap in and enjoy as we experience Britain's golden era of racing. Goodwood is fanatical about preserving the look of the golden era of racing as much as the racing itself. The attention to detail is second to none. Having everyone be involved creates an atmosphere unlike any other racing event. The crowds who attend the Goodwood Revival are treated to a magnificent spectacle of golden era entertainment. From the music and dancing to the salons and the military mess halls, authenticity is the name of the game. The wearing a period costume is not just limited to the spectators. Each member of every race team is also expected to be equally fastidious in achieving an authentic period look. All of the mechanics and even the team's patrons are properly kitted out in vintage uniforms. The drivers have even more to contend with. Not only do they race while wearing appropriate period costume on the track, but they are also expected to maintain the lofty off-track sartorial standards set by those effortlessly cool drivers of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. So with that in mind, James has today come to Savile Road to meet with our mutual friend, Simon Cundy, managing director of Henry Pool & Co., the Rose's very first tailors. Hi Simon. James. How are you? Very well, good to see you. Nice to see you too, yeah. thanks for having me. No pleasure, you're looking well, you've been somewhere warm. I Pebble Beach. Oh very nice. Yep. Well I've yep. been thinking about the revival, I've got some ideas for you to, to review. Yep. So thank you. Come on, come by. So I've got some ideas for you James, obviously for the revival itself, you've got a 
many options uh, when it comes down to the races and the people that will be there. I mean, you know what it's been there for, how it is at the Revival. Yeah, sure. I mean, it, for me, it's always important to have something that works for every part of the occasion. So it's not only the getting there and being in the paddock, but it's also driving old cars, you know, so you don't want everything to get creased, the traveling, yep. you know, putting stuff in bags and things like that. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be quite nice this year to have something that sort of matches in terms of a theme of one of the cars I'm driving. Right. Because, you know, quite often you're hanging around your race car in the paddock in whatever you're wearing, in sort of period dress, if you like, and looking like you're there in the 60s or the 50s. Um, so I think it'd be really nice if we could find something that's got just a hint of one of the cars. Absolutely. No, that's but the joys of the tweeds and the joys of the suitings. We can ma marry up with many things. So uh, thousands to choose from. But the practicality side makes all sense to me. So I think um, we've got what we call the worsted all sports. So that brings in the element of a worsted fabric um, and also the tweed itself. So it's a much more sort of um, brings in the lighter tweeds. So we're now down to 11 ounce. So is it more for the sort of fall? Obviously, a revival is going to be now in, in uh, September. For sure. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think for the revival, tweed is really important yes. because it's got yeah. so much of a country estate yeah. sort of vibe about it, hasn't it, with, yeah. with all the other things that happen at Goodwood. Um, but I think it's got to be something that you could you could wear on other occasions, whether it's a, an award ceremony or you go to Retroville in Paris. Mm. You know, very motoring or, oriented, but yeah. versatile as well. And I know things that you've done for us before, um, you can wear the jacket on its own. So it's got to be something That's that it. doesn't necessarily rely on being a whole suit itself. A whole suit yeah. at every, yeah. every you know, okay. opportunity to use it. Um, yeah, that makes sense. So we can mix up the sort of the check design to go with perhaps a pair of you know chinos and, uh, or a pair of flannel trousers and. You know, so you can give you a sort of a casual but yeah. smart look. And autumnal, you yep. know, so yep. it can work for if we have one of those glorious sort of 25 degree days versus oh, yeah. Yeah, let's hope. You know, a 15 degree <laughs> wet day. It's got to work yeah. for both. Well, I would say that the Duke always seems to have luck with this weather, that uh, touch wood will get it right for this time <laughs> But even time if around. the weather's bad, it makes yeah. the racing better. Yeah, that's true. It's more fun, isn't so, it? Yeah. I know. So being the tweeds we have here, we have what's called the Worcester tweeds and the Lambswool tweeds. Uh, who are very variant. And the Worcester tweed gives you a little bit of element of a, almost like a suiting, but it gives the element of having a tweed in, involved with it. Brings it down to about 11 ounces, which is very much a sort of suiting weight all year round, ideally for the fall, ideally for the winter and the spring. Um, various here would be between the lambs wool and the Worcester all sport and the wool. Um, what, what sort of car are we we're looking to do then this time, James? So um, for sure, I'm in GT40. In right the Whitson right. Trophy, and the Tajira Jaguar in the oh. Sussex Trophy, which for me is sort of one of my favourites because 50 sports cars, that's really where historic racing started. And it's the race that closes the revival on the Sunday night, and it's always really close. And it's a great mixture of cars, Ferraris, loads of 15s, uh, Lister Jaguars, D-type, wow. D-type Jaguars, uh, and of course the one off Tajira that we have. So it'd be, I think it'd be quite nice to match that because, Absolutely. again, it's the last race of the weekend as well, so I'll be getting straight back into something afterwards and hopefully going to the prize giving to pick up an award. I mean, that's the plan. <laughs> that's what we're aiming to do, right? Absolutely. It sounds like it's going to be a really good competition as well, actually, so it's going to be a pretty interesting It's always race. a close race, that yeah. one. It's yeah. lots of changing positions yeah. and yeah. some good drivers, Oof. you know, Sam Hancock, Roger Wills, oh, those yeah. sorts of guys, so yeah, yeah. yeah Perfect. should be good. And the colour base of the car is... Can so it it's a, a cost blue, so it's that sort oh, of yeah. light metallic blue. Very famous um, blue. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So, okay. uh, Well, being in that you know, tweed is always usually the greens, the browns. If you stick to the browns but try to have a hint of blue in it, yeah. it picks up on the colour of the cost, that would work, I think. And I, I think probably, you know, this, this end of the spectrum, it's a bit lighter. Yeah. I feel like these might be a bit heavy. And if, yeah. it, if it is a cold day, yeah. generally I would say the revival is, you know, three quarters of the time it's, it's fair weather and it's, you know, quarter of the time it's wet and cold. Yeah. You can always, you know, use your waistcoat to sort of yeah, keep you that sort keep, of gilet keep you warm. look, yeah, exactly. really, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. just the trousers and the and the waistcoat would be just as nice if to have sunny. around. Yeah, exactly. So I think this this lighter end okay. of the scale is definitely better. Well, this what I've come up with then. There's this one here, um, which would be the, again a very nice um, brown based, uh, giving that lovely tweed. It's quite a, a good strength to it, so you can actually see it from a yep. little distance. So it has character. Really appropriate as well for yeah, covered, I think. I think so. Yeah. It really comes across as that authentic sort of uh, tweed for the for the overcheck and, and for the fabric itself. So the overcheck being this time the blue with the carrier cost blue, which picks up in your car. Fantastic. So I think that really works out well. Spot I mean, we'll on. pick up on the lining, we'll pick up on the design, and we'll, we'll put some little small little things that details that bring into the usage for the event itself. So like, that looks wonderful. Yeah. Great. Love it. Okay, terrific, perfect. Well, that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> <laughs> Great, okay, let's spin that one up. 
Yeah, so based upon the uh, the tweed itself, I think we could bring into the element of uh, matching in the linings. So the lovely Kyriakos blue, we could then incorporate the lining inside the jacket. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good, nice design. I think that's a three-piece, of course, with a waistcoat. Um, we could also introduce a little element of like the ticket pocket, yep. which can be used. Because we still have the traditional big ticket, so perfect, love pocket a ticket pocket. pocket. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Two nice vents, nice little step collar on the waistcoat, make a very sportive look, not less dressier. Um, and it's got to travel well. Right. You know, and yep. also when, when you're driving an old car, you know, take the jacket off, but if you've got a waistcoat on, you want to try and prevent that. Oh, the little up. bit of a rolling up at the yeah. front there with a peak, yeah. yeah. Well, we could actually just cut it square at the baseline. So you do have a nice little line. As long as it covers over the seams of the okay. trouser, we can cut it square at the end. It's quite sporty as well. And it's quite a novel idea that when you're driving, you'll come out, it will no be wrinkles, it'll be nice and sharp. Well, it makes the suit fit for purpose, doesn't it? Absolutely, yeah. works together. Absolutely. So yeah, I think we could put a few ideas in there and make it very much a sportive look and some little practicalities into the design as Great. well. Great. So based upon that, James, I think we're all set. We can come down for measures, check you over. I know. An established customer here, but we still do nice little check measures for you, uh, and then we can start getting the cloth in, and uh, obviously getting it cut ready Perfect. for uh, the revival. Thank you. Come on through. Thank you very much. Hey James. Alex, how, how are, are you? you? Good to see you. And you? Any, any weight changes? Hopefully not, All but good. you'll tell me. All right. Spin around. Okay. Let's go over it. Forty-one and a half. Thirty-seven mid. Thirty-seven mid. This will sound larger than you think it is, but uh, <laughs> don't worry. <about> that. <laughs> uh, thirty-seven TW. Thirty-seven TW. It'll be 44. 44, 44 for the seat. Sounds about Good. normal, James. It doesn't sound, you look pretty trim as ever, so should be fine. Great, perfect. perfect. So um, I guess we'll see you in about four weeks, first fitting. Perfect. Do a base fitting, just check everything's all right, because it's been a while since you had your first suit with us, so. Great, yeah, all right, thank that. you. Look okay. To. Cheers. See you soon. Good to see you. With the measurements checked and the fabric selected, the next step for the team at Henry Poole is to modify James's pattern before chalking up and cutting out the fabric.
The fabric is to be sent downstairs where the team will begin to hand sew all the pieces ahead of a first fitting with James. Meanwhile, over at DK Engineering, the team are hard at work putting together their own pieces. Having initially stripped everything down in preparation, the careful and painstaking task of rebuilding the cars is now underway. This is the last chance they have to service the cars properly before the race, and the team takes great care in ensuring that the cars are perfect down to every last bolt. The Ferrari 365 Daytona was also getting some last minute prep as well, as this would be the car in which James and I would drive to Goodwood. Back on Savile Row, it was time for James to come in for his fitting. Simon. James. Lovely to see you again. Lovely to see you again. Thanks Welcome. for having me back. That's a pleasure. No, we're here for a second fitting today, so we're getting closer. We're ready for the big weekend, so... Uh, Great. Come. I can't wait to see how it's turned out. Come on through. Okay. Finished trousers, how do they feel first off? Yeah, no, they, they, they fit really well fit around the waist, so yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're certainly neat, but they look nice, nice tapered bottom. Uh, they will break a little bit more on a boot, so if you were to wear a shoe like mine, they'll, they'll drop a little bit, so maybe we'll discuss I think for, for an event like Goodwood, though, you, there's so much walking, you'll tend, and it can rain, and there's fields yeah. and things like that, you tend to wear, you know, a boot, so. Yeah, let's have a quick look at the back. I think they're looking good. Yeah, we might just shrink here. Swing the back of the thigh a little bit more. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Try the waistcoat on then. So, this is yeah. the one with the, the cut bottom. Yeah, so this is a straight bottom. Can help so me drive. When you sit in, in the car, yeah. it won't, the peaks won't, um, won't buckle over. Thank you. So, we just basted the back in, first of all. So generally, how many fittings will people come for during the process of making their suit? So if, it, if it's a new customer, you would do the cloth ordering with Simon, and then I'd want to see you about three times after that. Yeah. Three or four. Depends, some figures are super tricky. 
So this is a little tight at the minute, I would say, just when I'm passing that up. You know, if you've got to sit in the car and your yeah. diaphragm expands. So, but we've only got the back basted in, so okay. that's quite easy to let out. And we're just covering there. But, just, yeah, it's slightly riding up, so I'm just going to drop that down a bit. Get a bit more coverage. Yeah, we have some clients where we'll just literally make it and send it to them. Uh, you know, they don't change weight. So, uh, all the work's They're regular enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's hanging nicely there. Just make sure it's in the middle. Yep, checks hang nicely. And you can wear that open, show a bit of waistcoat, and it still hangs beautifully there. Do you look pretty good, James? Thank you. Thanks to you, not me. Yeah, well, we've got a really good coat maker on this as well. He's, he's a young guy, but he's just got, look at the shape on there, just beautiful chest, nice sleeve head, and this beautiful roll down here. Love it. Yeah. yeah. That's going to look great alongside the Tajiro. You pick up the blue perfectly. Definitely. I think it's amazing, you know, whenever I put a suit on it fitting like this, it just really is, you know, made to your body. Yeah, it feels. It is. You get very used to it, I think. And when you go back to something. There's nothing awkward, nothing uncomfortable. Which is what you want because you're going to be. Just getting that straight in. Wearing it all day, every day. No, I think that's come out really well. It's just the waistcoat that's uh, collar sitting nicely. You can always wear this as a sports jacket yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. You could throw this on with jeans if you wanted. And it just, the, the material looks like it'll travel really well. So you'll be able to put it mm. in a suit bag or whatever. And yeah, it's that slightly springy, springy weave yeah. to it, so. Um, maybe just. Oh, it's cool. Great. Love it. Thank mm. you very much. Okay, so we'll get this finished up now and then uh, see you again just to check it's still perfect. And then you get it for Goodwood. Perfect. Yeah. You look the smartest the pattern, dapper. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. With the work on James's suit now complete, we headed out into the English countryside, making our way towards the Goodwood Estate. En route, we had arranged to join up with Simon Cundy as he was also driving down to Goodwood in his own classic Fraser Nash.
At last we reached our destination. For Simon and me, this was the beginning of what was sure to be an incredible weekend of fun and excitement. But for James, things were just about to start getting serious. So here we are at the Goodwood Circuit for what is arguably the most important vintage car racing event in the world. You walk in and it's like magic. It's like you've been transformed back in time. Just more than anything, just sort of experiencing and feeling that sort of elegance that perhaps we, we, we miss in our day-to-day -day life at the moment. You know, the event is really made by the fact that everyone is willing to dress up, everyone brings their cars and, and enjoys it and gets involved. I mean, if people didn't want to take part, none of it would work. Really. It's incredible. It's like every single post-World War car there is, is here at Goodwood. 